repercussion at, such as hand clapping and foot stamping um, and dance um, movements to complement um, the text of the songs. Um, I don't know, Anina, are you already with us? I just want to make sure. Okay, it, it seems that she is, is not with us. Um, for this session this morning, I am going to introduce to you Professor uh, Dizu Plaikis. Professor Plaikis is um, a professor, uh, he's lecturing at the um, University of Cape Town uh, Music School, and he is really a, a very, very um, exciting and, and, and uh, deep knowledge of the indigenous music and he's, he's performing him itself and, and you know what is so wonderful is that he is actually bringing in all the different meanings and wonderful uh, stuff that is that that is in the indigenous music and is, is actually hiding there for us. Uh, unfortunately, Professor uh, Plaikis could not um, attend the meeting this morning, but we were privi privileged to record to do some recordings on, on his work during the previous months, and WCED um, did this, and, and it will also be available later on when uh, the whole session will be available on the um, on the Western Cape Province. Um, e-portal where you can see um, the, the total of his work. So um, I am going to hand over uh, to, um, to, to this recording of, of, of Professor Dizu Plaikis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Betsy, for that introduction. I think when you touch that thing of call and response, it just kickstarts me to say that is where it will start for us with children. Definitely, as well. yes. That so is we ready. Ready. Yeah. We're ready to Total go. Of his work. Okay. So um, I am going to hand over uh, to. Um, Hi, everyone. My name is Dizum Zikantu Plakis. I was born here and I've raised in. Thank you so much, Betsy, for that introduction. I think when you touch that thing of call and response, music. it just kicks off. But I'm a lecturer that here at the College of Music. And my interest in what I do is, here, I teach it. about the indigenous traditional music. But at this point in time, I would like to start first with an instrument, with an ancient classical instrument of the Kosa speaking people. But this instrument, it was first a weapon of the same people, a bow and the arrow. And then it later became a traditional instrument. But it was the same people also who started the musical instrument because they were the first to do the bow hunting. So after hunting, the same shape of the instrument, instead of now uh, hunt, when they gathering, they enjoy themselves by playing the same people they don't bow like us they strike on the, the stick on the string and my mouth I make it as a resonance because I want to amplify the sound because now this is how it sounds but once I plug it into my mouth it becomes louder This one is exactly the wood of this instrument that we call it umkhope. Also this one, but this one is the loudest because this one, it had to be strong because of the tuning peg. I cannot put a tuning peg here because this is going to break when I tune it because it's a very light wood.
This one is called Oadi. In the olden days, women would cut this, the calabash according to their size of their breast before making the Oadi. We use a different stick. It's the same string that I've talked about from France. It's very loud and then with a tuning peg. And the technique of playing this instrument is open and close. Now, what you have to listen to the instrument is the harmonics and overtones. So this is this open, close that I'm talking about. Open, close, open, close. This is an instrument which our mothers, they will play for us before we go to bed. As you know, in different traditions, people, they read books for their children before they go to bed. But amongst the Kosa speaking people, our mothers, they play this instrument for us to go to bed. I happened to buy some of this instrument uh, from the Chopi people of Mozambique. And then I decided to create my own one. As you know, this is when you Tighten the boxes, people they use this. Ten, twenty people playing this tune, the same tuning, and they play. It sounds so good. It's like frogs are just singing in the water, you know? Now, I'm going to play an African violin. <laughs> it's got one string, but the sound it makes, it's so beautiful. This one comes from Kenya, but it's used, mostly used by the East African countries. What surprises me is the tuning peg, you know? This looks like a dangerous weapon, you know, but you know. <laughs> so, here's the instrument called Ndingi D. In Zimbabwe, they've got this instrument called the, the mbira. The instrument is called an African thumb piano, but here we are using thumbs. I'm using my two thumbs and I'm using my right index. This calabash is to amplify the sound. The bottle tops are making the percussive sound. This one is called Nyonga Nyonga. This one doesn't have any of the treble clef. That one has got a treble clef and the bass clef. So this one, it comes from Mozambique, but it was popularized by the Zimbabweans, and most people think that this instrument comes from Zimbabwe.
percussion it helps to it adds the beautiful sound into the sound that you are playing when you play a drum you need something percussive which is this kind of instrument this is a very very lighter reed when you can when you hit with your thumb it sounds like a drum but on this one is very hard because inside i put all those glass beads that are very strong and uh, a percussive. So I'll start by playing this one. Now, the steam train, you know, we always it move like these are shakers, I would say. In Zimbabwe, they call it hosho, you know. Why is they called Hosho? It's like Hosho, 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 Hosho. We name the instrument because of the sound it makes. So if I say, here's my one, my one, 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 one. Now I'm going to play two, three with my right. One, two, three, 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 one, two. Yeah, 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 O man, you man, you man, you man, People, they call it shikere. Usually the shikere, this is how they play. But I found and I created my own way of playing like. So this one, it comes from Nigeria and they call it a talking drum. You put it around and then this hand must be a little bit loose so that you can play like... I was very shocked about this instrument because we South Africans and uh, the world, we started knowing the djembe maybe 40 years and this one has been around for over 2,800 years. This. this is where the instrument was created by the Malian people, which is Malinke. And this, they call it a djembe drum. Uh, it's a beautiful instrument because when you play in the middle, it produces another sound. When you play on the edge, it produces another sound. When you hold your hand and play also, it produces another sound. The perfect way to learn the djembe is by learning like bass, tone, waffle, slap, bass, tone, waffle, slap. Learning a djembe those are the things that you must master because once you master that now and then you've got to play for Now I'm gonna play 
a drum which we call it uma sengwana. To uku senga is to milk the cow. Most people, especially the Zulus and the Kosas, this is the instrument that they use a lot. And then now you find this instrument is mostly used in Brazil, you know, and how you play is like... Uma Sanguana is not a drum that is played alone, no, Umasengwana accompanied this one. Because usually this one, you play and sing. So the dancers now, they will dance like nobody's business because there are two drums playing, you know, and people singing. Yes, now I'm going to play an instrument from Kenya. In East Africa, in Uganda, they are different. There's an instrument called Amadinda Akadinda. Now I'm going to play the Akadinda style in this harp. If you look at this horn, these horns were made by Andrew Tracy around uh, early 80s, I'm sure 1981, 82. So when you blow, I, some other kudu horns, like the, the, the Jewish people, they will cut it here and they will play on the edge. But some people, they cut it here. So we, some people will call it a side-blown trumpet because now, Then this one has got a different tone. You can go very high because usually, as you know, the horn uh, it's an instrument that when the king is calling the people for gathering or for any, for any meetings, people, they would blow this horn. One who hears the sound would blow to another village. Then it would travel and travel. People, they will know because the signals are not the same. Especially when they are called by the king, they will know that there is a meeting. Here is a wind instrument, which is so simple and very cheap. Because this is a PVC pipe, you know, that most people use for plumbing, use it for electricity, use it for different things. But originally, it comes from a bamboo. It's an instrument that I grew up in Pondoland, uh, you know, while we as young boys taking care of the kettles, you've got something to play. Uh, play from the part where I cut that 45 degree and then what I do, I place my finger and I leave a little space for my breath to go in.
This one is totally different from the one that I was playing. This one is called a celluflator. She didn't tell me exactly where to blow. I look at the instrument, I said, I cannot blow there. I cannot blow there. There must be a place where I'm supposed to play. And then I found that, okay, it's here. And these are the best instruments for the children to learn before they could start the expensive flutes. Because the most important thing is to start with the simplest thing before you go to an expensive thing. So that gradually you learn the techniques of all these different kinds of techniques. Because now you won't be learning only one technique of, of a side flute, but also of a different wind instrument. Once you master that, you will find it so easy to play a wind instrument after you've been through all this. So that is why I always say that me, I like all types of genres of music because I listen to any type of music as long as it makes me grooving, you know, because I like to groove. There's so much that I'm getting for each and every music that I listen to because each and every composer spends time to write the music and to orchestrate and to do whatever. So we as listeners, we've got to listen to the music. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this was a fascinating session. I, I just think the grooving part, I saw people saying they're moving in their chairs. There's a lot of comments coming up and I would love to give that's the opportunity to talk to us and Anina as well. So Betsy, one of the things that came up a lot is that people are looking for resources. I think by Monday morning in the southern suburbs, I'm sorry for those music teachers that's not there because we're all going to start playing uh, on the stoops outside our school, so I think there will be constant correspondence, communication going around. But what can you tell us at this stage about the availability of resources, if there's a bank of songs, of indigenous songs available? Yes, can we just hear your thoughts on that? Uh, good morning, Anina. It's nice to have you part of, of the discussion. Uh, Hendrik, morning, yes, um, we, we, uh, as we all know, we, we did a lot of, of lesson plans um, during the last year when we um, were at home for the lockdown period. So we, we did a lot of, of lesson plans where there is um, a, a different uh, types of, of resources in there. Oh, I'm hearing myself. Oh, I'm <laughs> but um, so we are constantly trying to bring up some resources, you know, to for the teachers to use. Uh, Anina, is there something that you would add uh, to that? Would like yes, to thanks. Good morning, Hendrik, and morning, Betsy, and morning, all our mm -hmm. wonderful colleagues, and thanks for the fantastic comments in the chat. Um, the, the video of Professor Plyke is, is one of a few that we have filmed recently. And it's Edu Media, our um, film and media um, directorate that did that work. And those videos will be on our e-portal very soon, Hendrik, so that we can use them in our classes. Um, we have also done them in, in smaller little chunks so that you can, you know, focus on one instrument and work on that. And then with that, there's little uh, workshop notes and so on. And we are planning a workshop with Professor Plykis because we're all in love with him. Um, it was amazing working with him during the past few weeks. And yes, Betsy would also like to clone him as one of our colleagues said. Yes, definitely. Oh, he is such a wonderful person. And you know what? I, I, every time I, I'm just amazed by, by his knowledge and you know the way he's carrying it over. And what I also like, Anina, is is the fact that 
every instrument um, he is introdu introducing to us and, and, and tell us about it's it's got lots of emotion and um, uh, you know lots of meaning and stories behind it and that is so precious I think it is just yeah. wonderful I just love him <laughs> he is a wonderful mm -hmm. person well um, Betsy and Nina I'm going to throw now the whole apple cart around uh, because I just saw there's a lot of people from North Western Cape base and all I want to say is what do you think of trying to negotiate with Professor Plyce to do something online for people that's coming from afar because I, I do think this is a knowledge base that we can't just ignore I don't think we will ever get that knowledge out anywhere from ourselves it will need to come from someone that's so inspired like Professor Plyce do you think that's a possibility Anina? Absolutely absolutely Ingrid that is the idea with these videos that we've created of Professor Plykis. As I said, there are quite a number of them. And I see Melissa in the chat is asking, you know, about that and how can she make it available. So these videos will be available in which she unpacks the instruments as if in a workshop, you know. Um, and teachers can just download it and use it in their classes as they wish. But we are planning workshops with all our artists who have created these videos, you know. So um, we, but we have to twist Professor Plyke's arm because he's not keen on, you know, going online. He prefers to do, um, you know, a practical workshop. Hence the recording that we chose for today because it is a little bit difficult with the instruments and so on, you know. Yeah, I can just also add to that, Anina. Uh, when I spoke to him last week, he, he said to me, everybody is welcome to contact him and, and find out more and he will answer quest, uh, you know, uh, answer all the questions and so on and so forth. So he is very, um, you know, available, I think, and, and, and like, would like to communicate about the subject, definitely. Very generous. Well, um I'm going to say, Anina, thank you to you, Betsy, thank you for the road that you've traveled to put this together for us, and thank you in this absence to Professor Plykis. I, I must just tell you, I think that this was the heart of this conference, and yeah, it, it makes me feel extremely proud about what we are doing in the Western Cape of the Arts. Thank you to the two of you that's driving this. Thank you for people like Professor Plagis that's got that innovativeness around that. So I'm going to ask, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to move on and to be introduced to the next session. Clearly, you will need to do the following. You will need to go up to your left-hand side to the agenda, select your session, and you will need to jump in from there. But before we do that, just again a reminder that now I think we've turned up the volume. So the party can start. There's a lot of things running for the rest of this day, a lot of things being presented, and just interesting things. There's a CAMI session. Now, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have not used CAMI before, I can tell you it's one of the most valuable tools and skills to master, to turn every single hard copy worksheet into a digital version. It's just the dream come true. So that's coming up. You're going to be able to do certified, uh, certified qualification with CAMI as well. And then after that, we're talking to another American guest talking about innovation of younger children, the digital world. And then, of course, we're also waiting still for the MEC of Education, Ms. Debbie Schaffer, later this afternoon. And a very interesting thing that's coming, those of you that's got something going around art consumership, we're talking to Hugo Tiart and a panel that he's set together about the arts, the way they're moving forward. So, if I can ask you lots of prizes to win, please interact, please engage. This is the way to communicate. Make this comes as close to face to face as possible. I saw a lot of people that's crying on the sideline to say they missed that face to face thing. This is your time. Climb on, jump, engage, and we will react. Thank you so much. Please divert to your left hand, choose from the agenda the session that you would like to.